Welcome to your Charisma Coach. Now, I have a question for you. What has the Ministry of Defence, the British Olympic team, the FBI, and Marks and Spencer's got in common? Well, they've all been taught by this gentleman next to me. This is Ian Rowland. He is the author of the book I've hidden behind my back. <laughs> and upside down, the full facts of cold reading. Ian, you're pretty much the world expert on this. Cold reading? That's very kind of you to say so. There are many people who would strenuously disagree, but, but I'm just going to let it go. You've said it, not me. I'm, I'm not going to let it. I let it go. Yeah. So I took Ian's course last year on applied cold reading. Now, what is cold reading, you ask? Who better to answer that than this guy next to me? Uh, okay, what is cold reading? Let's start there. Um, I think everybody watching this uh, ha has either been for a uh, psychic or personal reading of some kind, or they know somebody who has, or they've seen a, a psychic on telly or on the internet. And the, the basic deal is, uh, mo uh, there are male and female psychics, but most of them are female, so I'll use the female pronoun. Uh, someone goes along to see a psychic of any kind, clairvoyant, tarot cards, read the palm, whatever. And uh, they come back and say, oh, she told me so many things she couldn't possibly have known. She knew details about, about what's going on in my life, my personality, my history, uh, my relationship, money. Career. Oh, it was amazing. They told me, she told me so many things she couldn't possibly have known. And that reaction has, is what has sustained uh, the psychic industry for centuries. Two possible explanations for this. Explanation number one, these people have a profound supra-natural gift of some kind, meaning the complete stranger can walk in and they can reveal all of these wonderful things. So that's great, so that's one working hypothesis. Um, the alternative is that they're using cold reading. Um, giving someone a reading, that is, is what it says on the tin, giving someone a reading cold, without preparation, without advanced knowledge, without doing any sneaky research. Uh, so you're just meeting a complete stranger and uh, managing to give them a reading. That's what cold reading is, and its power comes from the fact that you make statements, you don't ask questions. When you actually meet someone and make a statement about them, and it's accurate, or sounds accurate, um, a lot more happens. You build rapport a lot more quickly, you seem to have a lot more insight into their life, and you are showing empathy. You are seeing things from their point of view. So, you know, in the psychic context, uh, the, the, the reader says something like, now there's an indication here of a health issue, perhaps to do with the lower back or the chest area. It's been going on, it's been on your mind for a while, and you've recently taken steps to address it, but you're still not quite happy with the results. Something like that. Now, if that's a hit, it sounds fantastic, and you're, you're demonstrating empathy. We're seeing the problems from the client's point of view, which is a fantastic rapport building tool. And then people go, yeah, but what if they're not suffering from right. that health problem, you know? Well, in cold reading, you're never wrong. Now, for example, uh, I used to be, I used to sell um, technology training courses uh, and, and services for large companies. And I might go in and say something like, um, yeah, now, uh, as far as I'm aware, um, over the last couple of business cycles, there has been pressure on the training budget, so you've got less money to play with, but of course the requirements are expanding all the time. And given that you're trying to diversify your current market, that's probably creating quite a strain. Right, so quite now, a mind read there. Now, if that happens to be correct, or substantially correct, terrific. I'm showing empathy, understanding, I seem to have done my homework, I'm seeing problems from their point of view, mm. not mine. And that gives us plenty to talk about, which will lead us to the point I want to get to, which is, and that's why I thought it would be good for us to talk today, because we can help, blah, 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 and we're into the sales pitch. Um, question. What if none of that's right? What if everything I've just said is completely just wrong? kick the ball over the net. Yeah. Um, so people who don't know about ACR think, yeah, but they're going to say, no, actually, we haven't contracted yeah. our budget and we're not thinking of diversifying. I don't know where you're getting your information from. When you use ACR, uh, we have things called revisions, which are eight different ways of turning any statement, any disagreement into an agreement. And I do mean any statement at all. So even where it looks like there is potential for disagreement, you have a way of moving the conversation forward in a positive way, a very benign way, friendly way, 
so that there doesn't seem to be any disagreement at all, none. And the conversation can still move forward in a positive way and get to the, the bridge point that you want of, and that's why I thought it'd be good for us to talk today because we can help, da 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 da. Um, now, I'm not gonna try and, I won't, I won't try and sit here and explain how all of the revisions work. Um, this can takes at least a day. Can you give us an example of a revision? Uh, well, one of them is the applicability revision where the basic pattern is, what I've just said might not apply to you, but it applies to many people in your business or in your industry or in your market. Uh, I'm glad you don't have that problem because what we do works better if you don't have that sort of problem. So you're, you're, first of all, you frame the statement as this applies to you. And if I get a negative, I say, oh, I'm glad that doesn't apply to you. All I meant was many other people I know in your market, your sector, your industry, your business, whatever, have that issue. I'm glad you don't. That's why we should be talking today, something like that. So that's the applicability revision, but there's seven others. And the strange thing is they actually cover every possible statement you can make yes, they do. in the world. The basic point here is this. It may seem an unusual way to put it, but I think the people who are working the psychic industry and give readings, they are the world's experts in terms of rapid rapport or building and establishing rapid rapport. And we, the rest of us can all learn from them. And I've taken some, not all, but some of the same techniques, transplanted them into non-psychic context, and I teach people how to use these in a very ethically positive way, by the way. Uh, it can sound a little bit dodgy at first if you don't go into the details, uh, but the richness is in the details. It is ethically positive, and it can just lead to such rapid and fantastic building of rapport, which is good for them and good for you. I, you know, I, I left your course with a real understanding of how to navigate conversations in a way that mm. enables me to connect with people quicker now. So thank you for that. And and he was a very good student, by the way. I just, yeah, I just got to mention, I, he's not paying me to say that, but you were actually a, among the better students I've ever had. Well, that's, so. that's very kind. Uh, you know, now, I'll see you on the next episode of Your Charisma Coach. Ian, speak to you shortly. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Have fun. Interact in a bit of a different way. You don't have to ride on a shopping cart. You can use a cucumber as a sword and start a fight with someone if you want. The main thing is you have fun.